have us in the slide showing? Yep. Very good. Welcome everybody to today's Do Forms webinar. Our goal for today is to show you all the features of Do Forms that take advantage of the GPS capabilities of your smartphone or tablet. Um, we're going to show you things that are in place and have been in place. We're going to show you things that are ready to be deployed into production that you can start to use today in beta. And we're going to show you uh, what's coming next as far as GPS is concerned. Anthony, click over to the next slide. And by the way, I'm John Darienzo, and on keyboards today you have Anthony Trani, who will be giving the demos as we go through this, and we'll be jumping in if he has any uh, value to add into this. We usually do a good job of, of tag teaming so that we get you all the information possible. So the first thing I want to just talk about is, is really the list of features that are now available and soon will be available in, in do forms related to GPS. So for those of you that don't know, you can turn your device, as long as it has a wide area network radio, into a full-blown GPS tracking device. It runs in the background. Uh, people do not have to turn do forms on. You don't have to be in the form mode. You could just, as long as you have do forms in your, on your device and you have tracking turned on, it auto starts, it auto turns back on if somebody tries to turn it off, um, and it physically tracks your device. Um, it's the equivalent of a, an inboard or an onboard tracking device from the perspective of it's tracking uh, every three minutes. That could be made every five minutes if you want. We don't go less than that because it could you know, mess up your battery if you really started to track one minute or less. Um, so <clears throat> basically, it knows how to do a lot of things. It's very smart. And what we're finding is that smartphones and tablets have so much computer power that they actually make much better GPS tracking devices than cheap little devices that are stuck underneath your dashboard into an ODP port where they're trying to give them to you for as cheap as possible or free or 99 bucks so that they can get a lot of people signed up. Those devices typically don't have near the amount of power and, and CPU and memory and storage that your smartphone or tablet has. So we're finding that there's a huge degree of accuracy uh, doing GPS tracking from your smartphone or tablet. And we're gonna go into more on GPS tracking a little bit later. Um, another feature we added in GPS tracking is find closest to. So if you have a whole bunch of techs out there and you have an emergency and you need to find the closest technician to some location, you can just type find closest to and it'll find the closest person. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit more too. Um, something we've had forever in, in do forms is the ability to location um, stamp your Form. So if you have a form and you want to do a, an auto stamp or an on-demand stamp, you can literally put a GPS stamp into your form and you could either tell it to GPS stamp when something happens, like you hit a button or a field is entered, or you could say, I want to have a get GPS button. So there's examples where people may go out to, let's say, a runway and they'll stand on a pothole and they'll take a picture of it and they'll circle it and they'll say, take that GPS right here. And then they've got the pothole and that GPS right there. And then if they go and they put in multiple GPS stamps in their form, later on you can see that all in one map um, every place that they've GPS. So it becomes very powerful to be able to see that form opened up and see all the places there are potholes, let's say, on that runway. Um, a lot of information will show you about forms on maps. So you could actually see the status of your forms on the map. You could open a form from the map um, and, and view it. So with the new map capabilities we have that are all based on Google, you'll be able to see uh, all of your form data as well as your tracking data, which is something kind of unique to, to a DoForms product because in most GPS tracking products, there's no user interface, there's no form, there's no data capture. So the only thing you ever see on the map is, is where the vehicles are. You know, with DoForms, not only can you see where the, the people are, but you can also see what they've done, how much revenue they've collected, uh, whether they've opened a form or they've completed a form. Um, where they've done those things. Uh, one of the other things that's been in due forms is distance from expected address. So if you dispatch, let's say, somebody to go to uh, 10 Main Street, and when they get there, let's say they have an arrive button in their form, and they click on that arrive button, then you could say, take the expected address, the address that was dispatched to me, versus the address that I'm at when I clicked on my arrive button and calculate for me how many feet or miles we are between those two points. 
And then you can do things like say, hey, if the distance is greater than a thousand feet, then set a notification up and let somebody know through an email, let's say that that this particular arrival was not at the expected address. So it allows you to verify that you you were at the dispatched address. Um, the other thing that we're going to show you today is driving directions. So you, you've been able to do that for a long time. You can get driving directions um, from uh, from do forms, and it, it basically is giving you Google-based driving directions. We have a partnership with Garmin, and they have a special device that if you use their Garmin tablet, it will basically um, give you truck-based driving directions. So do forms recognizes if it's on that Garmin tablet and can actually give you commercial driving directions here in the United States and wherever else Garmin supports that. We've recently added a few new options to our GPS widget. Uh, based on demand. What we've discovered is we have clients that are responsible for getting reimbursed for their miles, and they don't want to get reimbursed based on what the GPS system tells them they actually drove. They want to be able to say, I had to go from job A to job B, and I want to know how many miles Google claims it takes to do that, and that's what you're going to get reimbursed on. So the system now has the ability to do get address, get miles. So what get address does, really cool, is in the past, if you said GPS location stamp my form, it gave you geo codes. And those were good. It put, you could put it on the map. You could see everything. But if you were trying to look at, at that form as a human being to say, you know, did John really arrive at 14 Commerce Drive? Well, you're not going to be able to, as a human, compare 14 Commerce Drive to a set of geo codes. But now you can actually ask Google for the address of where you've just arrived, and that address could be easily viewed by a person and say, okay, 14 Commerce Drive, 15 Commerce Drive, even if it's not perfect, you're going to get a really good idea that they were exactly where they needed to be. In most cases, it's exactly the address, but they may have parked a different place or, you know, there's different variables that may make it off a little bit, but you'll be able to read the two addresses. Get mileage allows you to say, hey, Google, here's two addresses, three addresses, four addresses. Get me the route to drive those four addresses. So as an example, if you had to start from home and then go to a store to buy parts and then go from there to the customer's location to do the installation, Google will return back to us the exact trip to go to those three points. In addition to that, we could ask Google, what's the estimated travel time? And Google will return that to us based on current traffic conditions, which is very important because, you know, if it's 2 o'clock in the morning, it may take 10 minutes. At 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it may take two hours. So you're getting the actual travel time from Google based on what they believe to be the travel conditions. And then we have Get Route Map, which is one of our customers needed to be able to produce the map as part of an email that they send to their customer to prove reimbursement. So we've added a feature now to get the route map. So all of these features are available right now in the beta app. If, if you don't know how to access the beta app and the beta portal, you can reach out to myself or Anthony and we'll show you how to do that. But you can start using these beta features immediately uh, via the beta and we'll be releasing that to production very shortly. Um, the thing that we're currently working on, and I hope to have relatively soon, is geofencing. So basically, if you put a, uh, an address in your form and you build into your form and say, this is the address in my form, I want to be geofenced, then that form will automatically detect when it arrives into that location and when it departs that location. And that data will also be sent to uh, the GPS map as well automatically without you having to do anything. So it'll go to the, the GPS tracking system automatically as a geofence arrival and departure, but that information will also be available in your form, so you'll be able to have the exact arrival time, the exact departure time uh, from that particular job location. So that's being worked on, um, and I would expect it uh, early in the fourth quarter to, to see that, at least in beta. Um, so that's our next priority from a, a GPS perspective. So now we're going to do a little uh, presentation for you. Anthony's going to show you what some of these features actually look like. So if he comes in, Anthony, go, go first to your mobile screen. And then we'll okay. jump to Just Give me one second to jump yep. over to that. Okay, the screen should be coming up any second now. 
should be able okay. to see it now. We see your menu. You just have to open the form. Okay. So, <clears throat> Anthony, why don't you go through the demo? Sure, absolutely. So the first example that we have here is what John touched around, um, touched on a little bit is the distance from the expected address. Um, so in here, I have an expected address of 16 Commerce Drive in Cranford, which is the building next door to our office here. So when I go ahead and click get my current address, the feet away field is going to populate with how many feet I am from the expected address. So if I click my capture button, the location services will kick on, it will find my location. Okay, and then it, you'll notice that in here, it destinates 421 feet away. Um, so this is where John had mentioned, you know, we can pop up things like labels, where if it's over, you know, 200 feet or 300 feet, you could pop up a label that says like, hey, you know, we don't think you're at the correct location. You know, this, this can be miles, this can be meters, um, and basically you can do any type of logic around the value that's returned here um, to basically have, you know, email notifications trigger off, you know, warning messages pop up that say, hey, you know, you're too far from the expected address, we don't think you're at the right spot, anything kind of like that. Uh, the next example that we have down here, if I just scroll down a little bit, is driving directions. Um, so I have an address in there, and one thing that everybody should know is I have all of these addresses pre-filled in here. Um, it works the exact same if I were to have manually typed them in live, um, or if I use some of our other functionality to grab my current address. Um, all of these capabilities are, can be automated um, or can be manually input. Uh, so for the driving And Anthony, one other point, we've been able to use our user variables so as an example, we have one customer, they have their warehouse addresses as user variables, they have the, the home address of the employee as a user variable. So what you can do that there is you could actually say, you know, go to directions to the warehouse from where I am right now and automatically populate the warehouse address from the user variable stored on the device. Um, right. So we've been able to use those user variables to, to pre-store addresses. Yep, exactly. Um, so here, once I click the driving directions button, it's going to basically pass the address that I have in there to Google Maps. It's going to find my location. Um, it's going to configure for a second and find the best route um, to get me from point A to point B. And then as you see on my screen here, it will bring up the directions, the distance, and the best route for you to get there. Um, and once you've done your driving directions, if you simply click the back button, on Android, if you have um, iPad, you can just simply close down the driving directions app. Um, it brings you right back to your DoForms form, right where you left off. So you can basically launch over to get your driving directions. Once you've arrived, it'll put you right back into the DoForms application. Um, the next feature that we have down the list here is just a simple get address. So basically, this functionality, when I click this button, it's going to, instead of at the top here, how it gave me a little plotted map of where I was for my current address, this get address capability is actually going to return the full written address as, as an address, um, not, not geocode like John had mentioned. So if I go ahead and click get address, the location services click on, and then it populates 14 Commerce Drive, which is John and my office, which we are in right now. Um, so basically, it gives and you the one other fact, Anthony, yeah, yep. you can parse these addresses. So right. if you want to basically send the state to a field called state, so then you know how to pick the right tax code, or you want to send the city, or or the house address, or the country. You, there, there's different ways now to parse the address data out. Yep. When you're in the form builder, it actually asks you, do you want the complete address? Do you want just city, just state, just zip, just country? And basically, to choose destination fields in your forms to populate all of those values into. Okay. So then the next example that we have here is the mileage calculations. Um, so basically what I have in here is a three-stop tri uh, three trip. I have my address one, I'm gonna stop at my stop one, and then my final stop there. And what's gonna return is the total miles for the entire trip, the total time in minutes, and the map of point A to point B to point C. Um, in this example, it's just gonna give us from point A to point C here. But if I go ahead and click route information, you'll notice that it pops up as 30.3 total miles. It's about 45 minute trip. And my map here, if I bring this up, shows all of the different stops from point A to point B to point C that I can basically see in here. Um, all of this is customizable as well. It can be in seconds and minutes and hours. Um, the distance can also be in feet and miles and meters. 
Um, and same concept here, you just kind of pick your destination fields that you want them to go into. Um, as soon as you click the button, they return you all of these values. And I think that's all we got on the mobile side of things, John. Yep, that's on the mobile side. And then basically, so if you look at this, the, the reason that we've added all this information is to give you much better ability to, to have information that's not necessarily dependent on somebody hand typing in information, going to Google, getting it, putting it back in. The geofence will automate that to another level altogether. So you should be able to get very accurate information now. It's very hard for somebody to do a get address and lie because basically they're at that address. They have to be at that address in order to do that. Um, so it just gives you a, a great degree of accuracy. So Anthony, why don't we jump over to um, the new mapping engine. So for those of you that are not familiar with this, this is our new S-Class platform. Um, it's based on Google Maps. It's available by request if you're a advanced or premium user. Um, if, you're a, if you're a dispatch user or a standard or, or a professional, you have to upgrade uh, to either advanced or premium to be able to use this as a web user. Um, and we can have that conversation if you'd like to call us and, and feel free to do that. We'd be happy to talk to you. But this screen, you know, totally uses Google Maps and you can do things like the satellite view. And I think, Anthony, if you go to satellite, you point on the picture, you can zoom in and actually show them, you know, like our location. So if you click on one of your stops and, and do a zoom in, right, and then hit that, you know, you'll see exactly that that's our building. Uh, so that's where me, me and Anthony are actually sitting right now. Um, so you have, you know, full mapping capability. If Anthony, you know, went out and drove today, so if he clicks on animate, you could actually see his route. So it's got a lot of the same great features that you get um, with standard traditional um, GPS systems. Now, what's important for everybody to understand is if you have do forms, you're paying what, $15 a month. And if you have a GPS tracking system, you're paying $15 to $30 a month. Well, if you don't need things like uh, engine detection and engine monitoring and, and uh, sensors to know if they open a door or not, you don't need to spend the other 15, 30 to 30 dollars. You can get your GPS tracking uh, right from within do forms as part of your package. So now you have real time dispatch, GPS tracking, all the great features of, of GPS tracking all built into DoForms for the same price as, as DoForms without having to spend another $15 to $30 on a GPS system. If you look down at the, the data below for Anthony, um, we see a lot of information. So app start actually means that he turned his, his phone on and off and the system actually wakes up on its own. It doesn't, we see the app start, so that tells us that somebody turned their phone on and the app start, start actually goes out there and it tries to detect if it's moving or not. Um, and then what you can do is you can see, we can tell when we've started moving, we can tell when we've stopped moving. We handle drift very well, so you don't see yourself driving around the parking lot. We have speed, we have miles traveled, we have the time, the duration that stops. You can get the address if you click on the get address category. Um, and then up on the top where you see things like some of these controls here, you can do the um, things like say, show me uh, on this, with the status of my form. So it'll start plotting different icons and you'll start to be able to see things like this is a completed form. And if you click the eyeball icon, you could actually see and open up that form right in your map. So just, you know, it, it turns the map into a, a much more uh, user-friendly thing because now you can use the map as your interface and you can really start to see where people are filling out forms and you know if you had five jobs that day you could go right from the map and click on it and open up that form and see what your revenue is and so you know there, there's a lot of things that you can start to add into this product. Anthony go and do like the find closest to or if sure. you want to yeah. so before Anthony was in a uh, a map that showed only Anthony for today. Now he clicked on the main user group. So you can you can divide your people up into groups like the North group, the South group, maintenance installation, and you can look at, you know, find closest maintenance person too. So if you go ahead and put an address in 
and you say, you know, find closest to that address, it comes right there. And then if you hit get time to target in the corner, it'll actually come back and tell you under current traffic conditions, it would take that person 11 minutes to get to that location. So basically, you know, you've got the ability to have GPS tracking, you have the ability to find closest to, um, you can see your, your forms on your maps, um, it'll send you a low battery detection if it detects low battery. Um, once you start clicking on these icons, you'll see that right in the data below, you can see where forms were completed and not completed, reviewed and received. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, a lot of information. It tells you the form and the project that, that was filled out. Um, and then if you click in a row, it goes automatically to the map. So basically, you have all the features and capabilities of a GPS tracking system. Now, one of the other features, Anthony, go back to the PowerPoint, because I, I have some sure. stuff that I just want to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. So um, one of the features that you have in there is the ability to set sleep intervals. So if you set sleep intervals, let's say your people are using their own um, their own phones and they complain and say, I don't want to be tracked after hours. You could go into the GPS tracking for that device and you can say only track that person from nine to six. Don't track them on weekends. And what it does is it puts the GPS tracking on that device to sleep during that time. So you could say, you know, basically I only want to track my person when they're supposed to be at work, you know, Monday through Friday, nine to six. So that kind of eliminates the, hey, I'm, I'm using, you know, uh, I'm using my own phone. Um, so basically at the end of the day, like I said, it's not there to replace if you're a, a company that has trucks and you need to know when the back gate opens or you want to know if the engine is running low on oil, then you need to go to something that plugs into the OBD port and, you know, does all of that. And yes, you are in a situation where if somebody wants to turn the phone off, they can turn the phone off, but a lot of people can also figure out how to pull the, the device right out of the ODB port. So, if, you know, neither of them are, are, are to the point where nobody can infiltrate them. But at least with do forums, if they turn it off, we know when they turned it back on again. We can also see low battery conditions. So if they let it run out of battery, we get a low battery alert, similar to when your phone says, hey, you got 15% left. It monitors for that. It sends you a, a, a track to say, hey, you've got 15% left uh, back on the portal. Um, Anthony, have any questions come in? Anybody uh, like to ask one. a question? So if anybody would like to ask a question, just feel free to type it into the chat and, and we'll be happy to monitor for that um, and see where we go from there if that we have them. Um, once again, in order to use the S-Class backend, you have to request it. Um, eventually, we'll be releasing that out as part of the standard product, but right now it is in production. It is available as long as you're a premium or advanced user. Uh, we can turn that right on for you. Um, and you can go ahead and use that. And you'll find that there's a, a bunch more features uh, in S-Class that you could take advantage of from how you handle forms and you can actually see forms by your people versus just the form name. You can actually list all your, your people names and it's got view manager and you could save views. So there's a lot of features that make this new portal uh, very easy to use for your, your back office people. So if anybody's interested in having access to that or upgrading, to be able to use it, just reach out to, to me or Anthony or to you know, the rep that's been helping you and uh, they can make that happen. Any questions coming in, Anthony? Nothing so far, John. Okay. So, you know, one of the questions that, that I get asked all the time is, you know, does, does this kill your battery? Um, you know, what we recommend because you are setting every three minutes, send out a track. You know, if you're really giving this to somebody that's going to constantly be moving, you know, you probably want to have a, a, you know, cigarette lighter adapter or something that they can plug their into their vehicle and keep their phone charged while they're driving. It detects when you're stopped. So when you're stopped, it doesn't continue to send tracks. So if you have somebody that goes to a job and sits there for six hours, it's not going to kill their battery. If you have somebody who's driving from New York to California and they have it unplugged, it's certainly going to kill that battery quicker because every three minutes it's basically sending all this information. Um, so just a word, you know, if you're going to do that, make sure you have some kind of vehicle charging capability, which doesn't do seem to be an issue. Now, John. Go ahead. First question is from Dave. He has to review the ping, the ping times again. So today you can set it at three minutes or I believe five minutes. 
Um, and once again, you know, we haven't really offered one minute ping times because it's, it's a lot of data. You know, we're really not charging all that much for it. It's part of the package. Um, and it does, you know, it will kill your battery faster. So three minutes seems to be the sweet spot. We really have no complaints of people, you know, complaining about battery life. Um, so that's pretty much uh, where we default the setting. Some people will reduce it because they don't feel they need that much information or where they want to keep their battery even longer, so they'll set it to five minutes. Yep, John, we also have three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, and 60 minute options. Okay. Yeah, most people are looking for it to go down to like one minute, but if you really need one minute, you could call us and it's something we can have a conversation about. We just don't have an option for it in the in the system. And, and typically because everybody in the world would pick one minute just by default, and then it's just gonna kill your battery, so we don't wanna do that. Any other questions, Anthony? We have one more question from Dan. Dan says, we have maps with regions drawn in. Can custom Google Maps be made available to technicians? Can custom Google Maps be made available? So, I mean, you can you can take a picture of a Google Map and send it to your device as part of their image, uh, but there's no feature in this that will create you know an overlay that I know of. If it's a feature that you need, Feel free to contact us. We can talk about what, what it would take to do that. Um, obviously, the, the dev team has control over Google Maps. We're able to get all this information and back and forth. So if there's a feature in Google that we're not exposing, give us a call, and we could talk about what it would take to get that exposed for you. Yep, and I'm putting my contact email in there, Dan, in case you want to uh, take this conversation offline on specifically what you're looking to do here. Yeah. And oh, just yeah. to be Another clear, like the whole get mileage and all that stuff came from a customer who needed to, you know, be able to prove to their customer that they drove 50 miles so that they would get reimbursement correctly. And we built it, you know, in order to support that customer's requirement. So it's not unrealistic to think that you, if you have a special feature, as long as Google, you know, has it, we can incorporate it in. Okay, we've got a couple more questions that just came in, John. So Walter sure. asks... What happens if I am in a place with no internet? Is my location or route saved in the form and I get updates in the moment I get internet again? Yes. So the, the, the tracking is, is every three minutes. It may not get to you every three minutes, but you'll eventually get it. Awesome. Okay. Uh, that one, uh, Dave asks, any customers using this for EBV healthcare applications? So yes, um, what we're doing for EBV, that's where that verification came out that says how many feet you are from the expected location. And we're going to be using the uh, geofencing for our EBV customers as well. But right now today they're using, we built that verification feature that tells you how many feet away. And there's also a feature on time as well. So you could say verify time and it will tell you. So if you dispatch somebody and say, you need to be at this address at 10 o'clock, you could get back. They were within 10 feet within 10 minutes. You know, so it'll, it'll tell you how many minutes they were off from the expected arrival time and how many feet they were off from the expected arrival location. And those two features were actually built for our EVV customers. And one other thing around EVV that you know, may just help we found that most customers that need to do EBV couldn't figure out how to do the, the setting up of the jobs and all that kind of stuff. Their systems didn't really support jobs. The, the caregivers were determining where they would go that day and who they would see. So what we actually did was we created a feature in do forms that allows somebody to set a schedule from their mobile form. So for a couple of our customers, the caregiver actually goes in, they can do a day or a week in advance and they can set their schedule for the day. What that does is once they submit it, it actually bursts that open, it goes back to the, the calendar that we have, and it populates their jobs back to the calendar, and then it sends them a job as a dispatch to that customer or that patient. So now they have all the information that they need. So basically it's allowing the caregiver in the field to set their schedule for the day or the week. Now most of our customers, their back office was blind because the caregivers were setting their own schedule. So what we did in those cases is we partnered with the, the, the healthcare companies that they were using for their software. We got a list of, of all of their patients. The caregiver just goes in, they pick a patient, 
they pick another patient, another patient, they say from two, they pick the task, the hours are predefined, and then it basically builds their calendar out for the day or the week. Like I said, it goes backwards, it populates the calendar that can be visible to the back office. So now all of a sudden they see that Mary is gonna go to see Joe at 10, and then Vivian at 11, and Mike at two, three, and they have total access. And then as they're going and opening and closing those jobs, they have total access and it redispatches the job out to them. So now they have a dispatch. So when they get to there, they're able to do the, how close am I and did I arrive at the right time and everything. So it's solving the whole EVV problem for a lot of these customers that can't do the schedule in advance. Any other questions, Anthony? Yep, one more. Uh, Dumani asks, can we map a route using forms captured? Um, so I think what he means, Sean, is the, you know, how we can show the form icons on the map itself if we can create route images based off of those, which uh, I believe the answer is no at the moment. So, you know, at some point we'll probably add a small, low cost, cheap routing solution. And what I, mean, I don't even mean low cost, I mean low function. Um, what I found is there's two types of routing. There's people that want to be able to route and say, make sure you optimize how many packages I can put on my truck. You know, there's people that want to have all kinds of crazy routing based on time windows and, you know, all kinds of different things. And then there's people who just want to be able to say, show me a map and let me plot the best circular path through my route for the day. Um, that's probably the one that we're going to add to the system, uh, you know, probably right after geofencing. So the goal will be to basically get geofencing working first, and then we'll give you a, a small route management solution that'll let you sort of start to create routes in your dispatch panel. If somebody has a real need for that, you know, give us a call. Yep. And once again, everybody, I'm going to send out uh, John and I's contact uh, phone number and my email address. So anybody who needs any additional help or has any additional questions, feel free to reach out to us at any time. Yep. I believe that is all the questions that we have, John. Very good. Well, thank you, everybody. And once again, you know, we're always here. So if somebody needs uh, some more information or if you have other people in your company that you want to show this to or you just need a refresher, or a little help on how to set up some of these new things or how to access beta, feel free to reach out to us. We're always here for you guys. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Anthony. Yep, thanks, guys. Have a good day.